Okay, welcome to episode 52 of Lil Muck. This is a tiny slice of the Muck podcast where we talk to people in the media and politics about their favorite stories or experiences. I'm Hillary Dougherty, and Tina's not here, but we are going to carry on without her today because we are interviewing Jaden D'Onofrio, who is the chairman of the Florida Future Leaders Pack. He is back home uh, on spring break, and he said, what's up? Let's talk. And I said, okay, let's do it. And so I wanted to say first, I listened to your episode. You were first on our podcast. It was in November of 2022. And when I think about everything that has happened since then, because when you listen to that episode, we talk about where the hell was the Florida party. Yep. Manny Diaz was still the chair at the time. Yep. I even asked on there, has Manny Diaz popped his head up yet? Head yep. up yet? Because he still was nowhere to be found. And since then, um, you know, that was right after the 2022 midterms and DeSantis won by a landslide. He has now run for president and been taken, <laughs> lost that, you know, walked away from Miserably. that campaign, miserably uh, uh, wiped the Trump wiped the floor with him. And we have a new, of course, chair, Nikki Freed. And uh, I mean, a lot's changed with you, too. Now we have this Florida Futures Pack. I'm anxious to talk about that. But really just like, how are you? Our Broward boy is home. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're Hillary. welcome. Thanks for being um, here. Yeah, you know, back for spring break. Not really a spring break for me, but yeah. living life. Um, happy to be back in Broward. Mm -hmm. I've missed it. Um, the weather is much hotter here than Tallahassee. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. But, you know, living life and happy to be back. Good. You know, You're staying you know, busy. That's how, you know, that's what you got to do. Yeah. You know, that's what it is. I mean, look, there's so many things that we have to do. Um, mm -hmm. I know you just mentioned November 2022. That feels like an eternity. I know. Isn't um, it? It's like, I can't believe uh, how much has gone on since then. It's crazy. That was like, actually, November 2022 was the first time I got involved with the state party and the county party. Jeez. You know? So it feels like forever ago. Yeah. I um, remember that meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is like, That was yeah. one of my favorite meetings. Yeah. Um, yeah. Times. So, but also how much... You're making me feel old, by the way. I know. You know, this is I the first time I feel old. I'm 19. You're really making me feel <laughs> ass old now. <laughs> now that it's makes messed me, up, Hillary. That makes me feel old. <laughs> don't, don't talk about how old you are. <laughs> but it's crazy that things can change so quickly. And we've gone through now, too, a legislative session since you were last here. This last session was, was okay. I'm interested to hear, like, what you thought was the best or the worst uh, bills that went through. But... For the most part, we kind of walked away a little bit unscathed here. It was I mean, a lot better than when you the past. Think about, yeah, like abortion yeah. kind of was off the table. I mean, yeah. really just like waiting for the Supreme Court to give it, the Florida Supreme Court to give us that decision. But how much were you paying attention? I mean, you were there. You were in Tallahassee. Were you at the legislative offices? Were you uh, involved in any yeah, of it? Yeah, you know, it's quite easy. I literally live like a few blocks from the Capitol. So it's just a walk over for me and I'm there, you know, shitting on these people all day long. <laughs> you know, so. As it should be. That's how it's got to be. <laughs> hey, that's open government right there. Yeah. Represent, yeah. you know. So I would pop my head in on some some bills. I think, um, you know, there was a number of bills that were in the legislature that were just awful, yeah. right? And we see that every session. I want to say, though, that this session was much better than what we've seen in the past. Yeah. But I think that's directly a result of the failure of mm. DeSantis and his presidential run. Agree. You know, he yes. came back um, wildly, you know, <laughs> uh, less popular than what he was yeah. before, which is beautiful for us and beautiful for our legislation, for our state. Um, although there were still bills that, you know, we could look at and say, what the hell was happening there? Right. One bill in particular um, that I gave testimony on was House Bill 1223. That mm -hmm. was the bill that um, tried to basically allow for 18-year-olds mm -hmm. to own assault rifles again, yeah. which is a bill that they passed after the massacre at MSD. You know, I was a student in my uh, English class, seventh grade, sitting in Indian Ridge Middle School when I got the notification that there had been a shooting at uh, Parkland, which is 15 minutes away of where I was. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting that notification in the middle of class. I was like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. You know, as a middle schooler. So, so scary. I'm not even there. Imagine what the people feel like that are actually there, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I think I always carried that with me, and that formed my stance on, you know, how I feel about gun violence um, right now um, and, you know, probably for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a bill that was awful. I think another bill. You know, uh, House Bill 49 in its original version was essentially child labor laws mm. trying to roll that back. Uh, what are we doing in this state? I don't know. We've had those laws since like the 1920s, probably even maybe since the Industrial Revolution. 
You it's know, so bizarre. It's and a, part, a lot of it too is these laws won't apply to homeschool children. And I'm like, uh. well, wait a minute, what? And the guy who actually the rep that was pushing it was like, I worked as a kid. I was fine. He was also homeschooled. Yeah. Like he didn't have yeah. the you know the limitations of having to be at school all yeah. day and then work until 11 o'clock at night. It's yeah. impossible. And families need that money so the kids will be working. Yeah. Like that will be a real thing that happens to these families. There's also, it seems like a real attempt to make the kids dumber as well. You well, know, yeah. I, I mean, mean, it's like... That's always the public... Let's let's decimate public schools. Yeah, it's like, you know, let's ruin it with what we passed last session with mm-hmm. the vouchers and then also now, you know, putting the kids straight to work instead of trying to make a better education system for them. Yeah. Seems wildly dumb. And then you mix that with HB1 banning Ooh. social media, um, you know, for people under the age of 16. I mean, for example, for myself, I was um, I was always that kid that would read, like, all the history books in the libraries. I read every single one, actually, in my elementary school. Um, and then when that happened, I ended up taking to, like, YouTube and, like, social media to watch videos about, like, you know, what I cared about, which was, mm. like, you know, history, politics, government, stuff like right, that. Right, right. If you're banning that educational <laughs> platform, you're just making kids dumber, Yeah, you know? I mean, there's obviously, there is a real problem with certain platforms, right? There's certain things that are like, yeah, maybe there's, um, you know, not uh, not all content is good, but this is supposed to be the free state of Florida. <laughs> and uh, you're taking away parents' rights to monitor yeah. that. It's awful. I thought that's what we were about. Yeah. I thought we no, liked we're parents' not. rights. We're not, Hillary. We're it's not. crazy. No, we're not. I don't understand it. We're not it. cool with it. And every time I turn around, they're changing it. Now it's only certain social media sites yes. are going to be banned. You know yeah. what? I can't keep up. Yeah. It's foolishness. Yes. But also, where are we going that we want kids to be working like this? Like, there were reasons why ch- child labor laws existed. Like, yeah. where's Apparently even, not. You know, you know we I mean? need them working like, on the roofs. Yeah. We need them working, you know, <laughs> yeah. out in the sun all day. Yeah. I mean, we also, the legislature passed a bill to, like, ban, uh, like, oh, they, yeah. they preempted <laughs> Like, uh, what is it? Like, uh, providing shade or water to your workers. Yeah. Like, it's not required. So, we're just like rolling back yeah. everything at this point. Fuck is everybody. It, is, screw yeah. them, dude. Yeah. If you're not working in the legislature, <laughs> we don't care yeah. about you. Just get to Could work. Could you imagine you bring a bill to the Speaker of the House? He's like, How much damage can we do, though, to people? Does this do <laughs> enough damage? Because I We need a little it. bit more. Yeah. Are kids going to be injured at the meatpacking plant? Wait, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, it's a crazy time. Uh, a slap in the face to the families uh, and the victims at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll never forget. I think the most they do up there now is light up the building in remembrance of that horrible, mm. tragic day. Yeah. The le- the least they could do is try to keep these the laws that they barely gave us all yeah. those years ago. You know, in reaction to that. You know, what's so awful about it too is like literally the the day it was introduced. I think it was literally like yeah. a week before the anniversary of the yeah. six year anniversary of it. Yeah. And um, that's just awful, mm-hmm. just awful. I mm-hmm. mean, awful legislation. But like, dude, what are we doing, man? The same day, I think it was on the cover of this, uh, the front page of Sun Sentinel. Was they were talking about that bill, and then right next to it, a kid had taken a gun out of school in Ohio and, and killed a, a his fellow some of his fellow students. Mm. Like side by side. Yeah. It, I don't understand it. I yeah. don't understand it. I don't think it's important. I mean. I knew the things that I was looking for. I was looking for homeowners insurance relief. Like, was there yeah. anything that you think um, particularly affected youth? Was it? Would, would you think it's a social media bill? Is that something that the young leaders in our in our state were interested in? I think there was. Um, I, I I try and tell people this every session that if you look at the the, the past few legislative sessions, they largely target one demographic, mm-hmm. and um, particularly you know there's a lot of of um, emphasis on youth with this legislation that we see. And that was no different this uh, session either. I mean, literally the trademark bill was HB1, yep. you know, banning social media for those under the age of 16. Um, I don't really, th- I can't really, you know, think off the top of my head of anything that I'm like, well, that was a great bill mm-hmm. um, for young people. I mean, I would say, you know, one is like probably an unpopular bill for young people, but it's actually a good one. Was Senator Pizzo passing? Uh, he passed a bill that was uh, uh, banning like uh, road racing, essentially. Mm. But that's like you know, there was nothing like actually of substance in the legislature that was like something young people are calling for, right? Um, that is going to make a difference in our lives. That's the unfortunate part. It's it's funny too. I think we're so shell shocked when we pay attention to Florida politics that you're like. Whew. 
whew, we got out of this session in one piece, right? Yeah. I mean, you're just waiting for yeah. the, for, and when the session ended, I was like, really, there's not going to be another thing that's coming because yeah. they always love to sneak something in at the last minute. So that was a relief. Um, but now we're back in election season. We have a presidential election coming up. Yeah. We have a, se- uh, like uh, you had mentioned, you're at a fundraiser and we have a U.S. Senate seat on the line. Um any particular races you're interested in or you're watching? Um, I got a good amount. I, I mean, I like, um, you know, uh, first off, we have a primary here in Broward County for uh, Senator Book's district since yeah. she's terming out. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, that's a primary, so that's party side. I think, um, you know, uh, with our pack, we're really focused on Senate District 3, um, which is up in Tallahassee, uh, House District 37, which is in Orlando that has UCF in it, and House District 91. We have a great candidate in Jay Schuster, Mm. Um, trying to take out Peggy Gossett Seedman, um, and they have uh, FAU in the district. So is that Broward and Palm Beach, or just Palm Beach? Just Palm Beach. Okay. That's really a uh, Boca, and uh, those are three districts that I'm really looking at uh, the most. Um, really, you know, big flippable opportunities. I know we have one down in Miami Dade with uh, Joe Saunders running. I want to say mm-hmm. that's one thirteen. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, we got a lot going on. You know, the beauty of it. I think we say this every election, but this is literally. This is like there, we can't. This is this is no going any lower. Like we cannot do any worse than we did in twenty twenty two. Like that's it. That's it. It's so true. It's it. And I implore you, if you're listening to this and you're a fan of Jaden or this podcast, please go back and listen to when he was on because we are so fresh off of those losses yeah. on that podcast. Like I blew it's it up. still November, yeah. and we're so angry, mm-hmm. and it's just so frustrating. We had a terrible governor candidate in yeah. Charlie Chris. Sorry, but like twenty points is insane, and like I don't know how nobody saw that coming. But we were so angry and just looking for like, yeah. where is this? What the fuck is going on here and yeah. uh, i don't know we're s- listen it's march 2024 we are it's brewing but we are not in the heat of this yet but it's coming it'll yeah. be here before we know it and i would love to see rick scott out of that seat i don't know if we can out fundraise him we never probably will be able to but how you can't point at that man the things he wants to dismantle the things he wants to take away social security yeah how could she not beat him right I think, look, we have a real opportunity, a real shot. Um, not only is, I think, Debbie a great candidate, I also see, you know, what we're going to see on the ballot, you mm-hmm. know, with uh, reproductive freedom yes. likely to be yes, on the ballot. Yes, it's going to bring people out. Recreational marijuana. Absolutely. Likely to be on the ballot. Um, I think those are two really major issues for all demographics, but especially young people. Yeah. Um, and I think young people, you know, people view young voters as like this demographic that they can never reach and turn out in mass mm-hmm. right and if they do they're voting democrat largely absolutely um, by a, a, a massive amount compared to other demographics mm-hmm. and if you turn them out that's a serious win for democrats i think i remember obama saying years ago like you know uh young voters youth voters are like the the key to the democrats future like that's it that's what it comes down to because if they can turn that out if they can procure that base Republicans can't compete. Mm-hmm. You know, young people, young voters, youth voters like myself, college students, we're not supportive of the GOP. Mm-hmm. We're not supportive of any of their legislation oftentimes. We're not supportive of their dangerous rhetoric. But we've also been failed by the Democrats and mm. being outreached to. Right. And that's why a lot of them, a lot of people my age are registering as NPAs. Mm-hmm. And that's why we have to bridge that gap. And I think it starts with that youth organizing youth. Yeah. So let's get into this. So you just founded this pack. Yeah. Tell me about what it what it does, what it's for, what was the inspiration to start it? Yeah. And I'd also like to know who else is involved with like who are your fellow on your board with you? Yeah, I uh I don't know if I went into this on the uh, on our first um episode, but I actually I didn't. I know I didn't because <laughs> it w- it didn't happen then. But um so when we were having the FDP chair election. Okay, now I remember. Yes. Yeah. I remember what yeah. When we were having the FDP chair election, um, I was in support of, um, I was actually in support of, uh, Annette Tadeo to become the chair. Right. And, um, we, uh, I was, uh, trying to gather all the, um, the youth to get behind her. They were all really supportive. Um, I had actually learned through that process that there was the existence of the Florida high school Democrats and the Florida college Democrats. Oh my God. I learned of the existence <laughs> of it. I'm putting up air as quotes a senior, right now. As a senior in high school, yes. like you're almost out now. Here we hear this thing yeah. exists. I'm learning that it exists, <laughs> which means basically for anyone listening, they were 
you know, barely doing There's anything. a title somewhere of, yes. this, of this caucus, but. There was nothing ghost happening. Town. Yeah, Tumbleweed. And so I learned who was leading the caucuses, and I they had a vote in the, in the chair election, each one. Um, and I ended up calling them, and I said, um, look, you know, uh, all these young people, all these young activists, organizers are, are behind in that today right now mm-hmm. for, to become the chair. And we'd love to have your support as the caucus. And they were like, well, um, we'd love to. Uh, we don't know how to vote in the chair election, first off. Second off, <sighs> you're, the, you're the first person, Jaden, oh you're the first no. person to ever call us from the Florida oh Democratic my Party. God. And I said, well, that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I'm also not a part of the Florida Democratic Party, so I'm not your first. I mean, it's insane, but also that's on brand. Yes. We're on brand, okay? Yes. So <laughs> when I had learned that, I was like, all right, that's it. That's game over for that. Um, there needs to be change. Um, and I now know fully, you know, I, 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 told, I think I said this on, my, on, on that first episode. I told myself for a long time, I'm not going to get in the state party. I'm not going to get in the county party. Yeah. I don't want to touch it. Yeah. But after the election, I was like, fuck it. I got to get in there. Yeah. I got to do something about, you know, especially the youth side. Yeah. And um, when, that, when, I, when they had told me that on the phone, uh, both of them, by the way, both different caucus heads told <laughs> me the exact same sentence, basically. <laughs> and I was like, all right, things need to change on that front. And I set out on this, like, year, year and a half plan of how we can revamp youth organizing, youth leadership, youth opportunities, and making sure youth have a seat at the table. And, um, you know, after Annette lost her uh, chair election to, to Nikki Fried, who is our current chair, um, you know, I made sure to, to try and fix things with, with, with Nikki to, to make sure that, look, I really don't give a fuck at the end of the day. I just want to make sure we get work done. Yeah. Right? And, um, you know, Nikki's on that same side of, of which is of how it should be, right? It, it's Absolutely. What, it's what it needs Who to won? Be. Let's get on board. Let's okay, do it. Great. And, um, you know, we had set up, uh, um, uh, uh, some talking about how, you know, what needs to be done for youth organizing. Mm-hmm. Um, and our first step was creating the, uh, the Florida Democratic Party Youth Council, uh, which I was the inaugural chair of. And, uh, you know, we got a lot done. We got a lot. We were able to fix the party infrastructure and make sure young people were involved. Right. <laughs> Come on. Um, and so after that, you know, after doing that for a long time, uh, about a year, um, I felt comfortable enough um, that we were at a point where we can really make some real change. Um, and that was when I said, let's start the process of creating a PAC for the Florida High School Democrats and the Florida College Democrats. First time there's ever been a joint PAC. And, um, you know, I made sure that we had the right leaders in the right positions nice. for all of this. Yeah. Um, and right now we have Rhea Minyar as the president of the Florida High School Democrats. Uh, Alexis Dorman is the president of the Florida College Democrats. I came to them. I said, look, we need to do this. This is the way we promote sustainability. This is the way we make sure that the right leaders take out, you know, your positions when yes. you're done. High schools are moving up. They can move up. To yeah. These. Yeah. And Amazing. we need that joint pipeline to yeah. make sure that, y- you know, high schoolers, when they graduate, they go right into college, you know, and they're making sure that they're organizing in college, too. And, um, you know, once uh, that conversation happened, you know, there was a lot of support, obviously. And uh, we ended up announcing it in January, raised 20K in our first 24 hours. Oh, my God. 100K (gasps) in our first month. um, (laughs) And we're still pushing forward, you know. So you have more money than some caucuses in the state, some county caucuses, basically. Yeah. Bruh. Can, hey. can I get a 20? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, look, we got to do what we got to do, you know. And, so and now you got, this is fantastic, by the way. Congratulations. Amazing effort. And, uh, you know, this is incredible. I'm sure you know that. What do you do now? What happens now? Where? What are your goals in this election cycle? And are there issues you want to focus on? Are you fa- focusing on candidates because it's an election year? And, Yeah. Yeah. I, I read on your, I believe on your website that you're hiring staff. Like, have you oh hired yeah. staff? Like, oh you're yeah. a fully functioning. Yeah, we're running it. We're going straight into look it. At this. We're going straight look, into look it. Look at you. Look yeah. at you. Look, look at you. I, I mean, look, the biggest thing, there has been no statewide youth organizing right. in our state's history right. for Democrats. And we're talking about a couple thousand votes from registered uh, youth Democrats in a district could flip that seat. I'll give you an example. Yeah. Carlos Guillermo Smith. House District 37. Yes. He lost his election by 2,000 votes. There was 11,000 registered 18 to 29-year-olds who did not vote in that election. I mean, look at this. That's an automatic flip. Yeah. Quick, very quick. Automatic. Yeah. So, 
you know, look, the other thing, part of it was I wasn't confident that the state party was going to have all the resources it needed mm -hmm. to fund youth organizing. Yeah. And I, I think you know me as someone who says, fuck it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and that's what it was, you know. Um, and so when I see a problem that needs to be fixed, especially for youth, I'm going to get in there. And that's what we did. And with, you know, with all that money we're raising, you know, we're hiring staff immediately. We're hiring, you know, we have an executive director. We have a deputy executive director. Uh, we have campus organizers because that's how we're going to bridge that gap. Yeah. We're giving paid opportunities to young people yeah. to get in there and organize other young people. Yeah. And so the biggest way is through hiring those campus organizers on the campuses, we're giving opportunities to people that are literally living where they are organizing, mm. right? They're organizing young people that they're friends with. That relational organizing is so critical and so key, and that's what we're going to be able to do at all these campuses. And so while, yes, we're a statewide effort, we have our strategic you know, locations of where we're really trying to hammer down, and that's FSU, that's FAMU, that's mm. TCC, that's UCF and FAU. You know, Those three districts that those colleges are in are critical to making sure, A, you know, we take back, uh, get out of the super minority in the state house, mm. and also taking back a Senate seat that we lost in the last election cycle because of, you know, first off, Democrats were really outspent mm -hmm. in that district. And also the youth turnout was awful because there wasn't an actual turnout program. You're talking about the Carla Guillermo Smith seat, the one he's running that for? Was, that was uh, House District 37. The main one I'm re referring to now is Senate District 3, which okay, is up in Tallahassee. Okay, right, okay. That has Corey Simon in it. And that was Lorianne Osley who was running it in the last cycle. And so, you know, we have to bridge that gap. And that's by hiring those, those organizers. But we also, it's not only just having paid staff, it's also having the strategies with that staff. And so, you know, one of the things that has just gotten lots of love is I placed an order about a month ago um, for 2,500 custom condoms to distribute Whoa. on college campuses. <laughs> and the condoms... I'm blushing. I'm, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and the condoms have a message on them, and they say, don't get fucked by the GOP. <laughs> Vote Democrat. <laughs> yep. So... This is amazing. You know, we have things like that. And another thing, I purchased... Uh, 1,250 rolling papers to <laughs> distribute that say, I love Tallahassee. you know, we're putting up, <laughs> there you go. We're putting up stickers on them that say roll up to the polls, mm. you know, with the rolling papers um, to raise awareness, you know, with the condoms to raise awareness around, you know, the, the mm -hmm. right to choice being on the Absolutely. ballot, the rolling papers to raise awareness around the marijuana. Well, what are you, a marketing genius? I, this is we, incredible. This is, this this is, is what incredible happens. shit. This, this is, is what the state party should be doing. They should be getting, using these ideas. I mean, come on. I look, we there's <laughs> <laughs> what I'll say is, look, I, this is what happens when you get young people in there to come yeah. up with new ideas and, and br you know, breed fresh blood. But it's besides that it's young people who are not going to a uh, non young person <laughs> mm -hmm. and saying, what do you think about this idea? Should we do it? Can we do it? Do we have the funding? Y'all yeah. have no nobody to answer to. Correct. And so you're able We're gonna to do what we want to do. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. What we, what we know works. Yeah. There's no limits to it. Right. Right. The but, only but limit. it's also because it's targeting you and your age group. Correct. You know how best to target them. Correct. And so you not, I mean, it's, it's, it's No brilliant. one can tell us otherwise, right? right? The right. only people that I really have to answer to is the donors. I have to yeah. make sure that we raise the money to do these things. I can only imagine the, the hoops you'd have to jump through at any other state caucus to say, hey, we want to give out condoms to say, don't get fucked by the GOP. They'd be like, oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. What will they write in the paper? Oh, no yeah. one's going to do that. You oh, guys yeah. can do whatever. It's yeah. um, it's incredible. It goes it's, right back to me. It's like a new frontier. It's yeah. like Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> You're on a new frontier. You can do whatever you want. It's incredible. And also to fill in where you see this vacuum of no one's paying attention because it's so important because there is not a minute that is not should should be wasted. There's yeah. no minute that should be wasted. Gotta get right to it. At, at any time, not even yeah. just an election year. We always should be focusing and thinking about how we're getting to the next thing because that's how year after year we're going to chip away f away with the from the GOP yeah. stronghold that they have. What it should be year round organizing, right? Yeah. No matter what, if it's a cycle, uh, an on cycle year, an off cycle year, there was none of that last year right. for youth organizing because I mean, there was no resources. Right. And so you know this pack that we created. It's been so successful because I'm not only preaching that we're going to do all this work in the election year, but this is something that's going to exist for years to come. Right. I'm 19. I have many more years as the chairman of this pack yeah. to raise money for it and to direct the organizing for it. 
I'm really hopeful for the 2026 gubernatorial race. I really see what we're doing now as something that sets the groundwork yeah. for what can be done in that race. Absolutely. If, I, if we end up flipping those three districts or even two or one of those districts, the amount of money that I'm going to be able to bring forward for the gubernatorial race is going to be a completely different world than what I'm being able to get right now. And so that brings new frontiers for, you know, I mean, I am 99% sure Matt Gates is going to be the nominee Ooh, for the Republicans. Oh, oh. And Hold on, I need to get some alcohol. I know. I can't. You start pouring it for me, too. I can't. This start is pouring nuts. it. This is crazy. So, you know, with him being the nominee, most likely, in my opinion, um, we have a real shot at flipping the state blue in 2026. Um, especially with the people I that I just you know, want the governor's ma- if we get the governor's mansion we could be okay yeah. we would be okay if yeah. we could just get that one seat yeah I mean also the GOP here in Florida and really nationally they kind of do all the legwork for us they, yeah. they, they they are interested in things that are backwards and not progressive and but we don't I, message on it that's the no, problem no we don't we're but terrible like, at that's messaging what I mean they're it. doing the heavy lifting yeah. we just need to just go get out here's, there yeah here's what they just said yeah. here's what I they I saw a poll recently where it was it said like forty five percent of Americans don't think uh, Trump had anything to do with Roe v Wade being overturned. I'm like, had they seen him say that over go. and over and over again? Yeah. How is that possible? Yeah. But like, there's got to be a way to sell those messages. Yeah. That the messaging because they're really doing so much damage here. It comes down to meeting people where they are. Mm. When have we ever seen the party on the college campuses? In the past, never. No, I mean the only thing I know is that Anna Eskamani has a group, the Power People Power, people power for Florida, and they that's one not elected. party. That's a that's a pack one too elected. as well. Yeah, but and you know what? I think of another elected. I think of Jason Pizzo, who Senator Pizzo went. He to did that amazing th- talking tour last there year. That was incredible. Amazing. Yeah, and that's a perfect example of electeds meeting people where they are. Yeah, and it's not just about the college campuses. For example, if we're talking about seniors, you would want to go to a senior living home to meet seniors, right? Like. Right. When are we seeing our party doing that besides the few electeds that know what they're doing, the right. Senator Pizzos of the world? Right. You know, that's where we need to bridge that gap. Um, and we need to make sure that the party is actually actively out there. And I think it's been much better now than what we've seen in the past. I think we have a ways to go still. Um, but it's progress nonetheless. I mean, politics is so dominated now by these older generations we see on the national level. We have folks who just don't want to leave um on both sides of the aisle so how do we empower young people to participate in that process but also even run for office or like how do we do that is it is it issue based like we're like you said on the ballot we're going to have abortion rights we're going to have marijuana so is that how you think we can get them focused is an issue that they're dire- that directly impacts them I think for getting young people out to vote, it's the issues that are going to matter the most. It's not going to be necessarily the candidate Mm -hmm. unless you have some, you know, random person who's literally like just energized to all, you know, hell and they're young, you Mm -hmm. know. Um, I think for getting young people to run for office, there's a lot of times where people are, uh, you know, young people especially are promised resources and it doesn't come. Okay. Yeah. I've seen that many times in the last few months as the chairman of the PAC where, I have people promising uh, promising things, and it doesn't come, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and it's from people that you would otherwise expect to really follow through. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, things like that, that hurts. Yeah. That really, it hurts the motivation. It mm-hmm. hurts your want to keep going on, yeah. you know, what you're trying to get done. Um, but there's other times where you have people come through that completely alter your landscape mm-hmm. and really, you know, push forward. So being there for the young people when they're running for office, I think, means a lot. I know one person out here who's running for office, Emily Rodriguez. She's running yes. for state house. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's a great candidate, a young candidate, a Gen Z, if I remember, if I, you know, am correct on that. And, you know, that's the, that's the type of people that we need to show up for and make sure that, A, we're not only giving them the resources, but if, they, if we can't give them any more resources, are we on the ground canvassing for them? Are we phone banking for them at the very least? Are we doing something that shows, yes, we want a young person involved, are we also not actively shunning them out? You mm. know, I've had many times in the state party where I've been shunned out of certain things, mm. um, and and that's unfortunate. And I'm someone who has a lot more publicity behind me than any other you know young person, which means that there's probably a lot more times where other people are shunned out. Oh, absolutely. And that's not even known, mm-hmm. you know. And that's the unfortunate part. So making sure young people have a seat at the table, making sure that their voices actually matter to those who are sitting there trying to listen. Um, you know, we have to hear out the issues and make sure that that their concerns are heard out and that the resources are are being put for them. That's the biggest thing that I'm trying to preach with our PAC. 
give us the resources, we'll do the job. Yeah. That's what it comes down so to. So how are you going to determine who you support? Like you had mentioned these three races you want to focus on. Is that what you're going to do? Are you going to – let me ask you something. If a candidate isn't on board with one issue, would you even like is – there, is there a certain list of issues they have to be this kind of progressive? Or yeah. are there just youth issues that you know that they're going to vote the right way and that's what that's what we get? Look, I, I think – the, the beauty of it, those three districts that we care about the most, you know, in, in the Orlando district, Carlos Guillermo Spencer district, we have a Gen Z are actually running in that seat mm. with Nate Douglas. So, you know, he's someone who knows the issues personally as a Gen Z -er. I think with Jay Schuster, mm. um, he's a great candidate who's also young. He's not a Gen Z -er, but he's also very young. He's probably one of the youngest in the, the state for candidates. Yeah. And I know him personally. He's a good friend of mine yeah. who he knows the issues because he's willing to hear out anyone. You know, and let's say I disagree with him on an issue. I know for a fact that he's going to sit there and listen to me on right, it. Right, right, right. You know, and that's what really matters the most. I can sit here with any senator and go, you know, back and forth on the issues. But if they're not listening to me, then that's a whole different ballgame. But I know for a fact that if I sit with Senator Pizzo on why I disagree with, with him on something, he's going to sit there and listen. Right. You know, and that's what we really want to see the most, I think. Um, with Senate District 3, you know, we're yet to see who, you know, there, you know, uh, we have a few candidates in the primary. Um, we'll see who comes out of that. Um, but, you know, if there are, uh, I think there's a real three main issues that young people really care about the most. One is the affordability crisis in mm. the state. You know, we, it is, cost of living is very high right now. And the governor's done nothing to do it, uh, to confront it. I think young people really care about that. Based off of our poll, we did a poll that had that, number one. Number two was the right to, to, to abortion in the mm -hmm. state. And with us seeing on that, that on the ballot, I don't think you can be a Democrat and not support that. Right, I agree. Um, so, you know, if anyone doesn't support that and they're a Democrat, they're not a Democrat. Yeah, I yeah. don't support them <laughs> in that. Yeah. Um, I'm never going to support them. <laughs> and then number three is gun violence, mm. you know. And so I, I think it's important for our candidates to realize we're the generation that went through elementary school, middle school, and high school doing school shooting drills. Mm. Um, we're the generation who knows people who've gotten shot or have been at a school that has people had shot. You know, yeah. I know people personally, right. That literally in our community, yeah. Parkland. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's, I think if, if there, as a candidate, if you can't connect with young people on those three issues, I think you're in a world of hurt with young voters. Um, but there's also a lot of them that don't think that young people turn out. Right. And they feed off of that. We I see that with the Republicans. I got to tell you, the last two major uh, election cycles, how could you even begin to think that? Yeah. What we saw in November of 2022, we talked about in that last episode, yep. the way that that wave of young voters that came out completely, yep. it was a wave that flipped seats that changed. It changed the the landscape yeah. of that of that election. If you remember. And what was their response? They wanted to change the voting age. Remember? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and so. If you remember the, ep the last episode I was on, I spoke a lot about how well Wisconsin did with right. turnout. Well, what happened was <laughs> after that, um, in a judicial election, Janet Protasiewicz, who's running for Supreme Court in Wisconsin, mm. in an off-cycle election year, won her office being pro-choice simply because of youth voter turnout and youth voter support. I she would not it. have won it if it wasn't for youth voters turning out. And that goes to show what um, youth organizing can do year-round in an off-cycle year and in a cycle year um, to change the landscape. Yeah. And we have to bring that here in Florida. We're behind on doing that. We're behind Wisconsin. We're behind Michigan. We're behind Georgia. We have to catch up, and it's by letting youth lead youth. And that's what we're doing with the PAC to make things happen. It's incredible. It's inspiring. Look at you. I appreciate it. Look at you, We kid. got work to do. Huh? We got work to be do. You're all grown up, and you're all grown <laughs> up. What are we going to do? Hey, I came on the first episode <laughs> shitting on everything. <laughs> Might as well do something. Listen, I'm still shitting on everything. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. At least I'm so proud that you've done this. It's incredible. I know that I'm sure that you're proud of the work that you're doing. I hope that you are. I hope you know how important it is. We really, really need it. I mean, I. it's such an... From when I was in high school, all you heard about was youth vote, youth vote. Like, yeah. it's time. It's beyond time. And if the GOP is going to do us a favor by taking all these rights away to get these kids to come out, yep. let's let's go. Yep. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's get Biden reelected, please. Yeah. And uh, Hey, his State of the Union was nice. I think yo, that that's a provided a bolster. I was there for this. Really I was good. Incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think uh, fundraising numbers show that. 
you know. Hey, listen, I gave money for the first time ever to there Joe Biden the next day. I there was like, go. I'm going in. I got a major crush on Dark Brandon, I have All to right. tell you. I love, I, yeah. I, I love how sassy he is yeah, on Twitter. That. I'm here for it. Get that. <laughs> tell us how people can get involved, where yeah. can they go to donate, how yeah. they can be uh, volunteers for yeah. your PAC and the work that you're doing. Um, first off, www.floridafutureleaders.com. Nice. Plug a donation there. I would appreciate Let's that. Let's do it. Um, the biggest thing, we want to see people on the campuses, right? I, 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 I've ke- I keep saying youth organizing youth, but that doesn't mean we're leaving anyone out to do the organizing. If you want to come on the campuses with us to organize, by all means, join us, right? We want you there. Um, we welcome you. You can pass out the custom condoms and the rolling papers with us. I mean, the, the, the very Why least. Why not? Yeah, you know? that sounds fun. And you fun. can take one home yeah. if you want. You know? Why not? No judgments Get here. Get you going. Florida you know? Why not? So we accept everyone. Yeah. You know, we're equal people here, okay? We're not the Jew. Hillary, five condoms. That's <laughs> it. Put the rest back, Hillary. So you can't take 10. You can't <laughs> yeah. take 10, Hillary. Uh, you have I'm a so limit. So embarrassing. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you can visit our website, www.floridafutureleaders.com. Um, we have actually, uh, you can contact us through there as well to hear about the events that we have going on. You'll see it on Mobilize as well. If you're familiar with Mobilize, that's where mm-hmm. all the events are on. Um, you know, we're really going to be all across the state um, trying to do what we can to turn out young people. And uh, it's not only just about young people. You know, it's about just making sure that we turn out people in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and while my role right now is very specific to youth organizing, you know, I touch a lot of other just general campaigns, right? And we have a lot of work to do with other campaigns that are not necessarily youth mm-hmm. fully focused. You know, maybe they don't have a college in their district, but just getting involved in general is very important. You know, I'm going around the state right now to DECs, clubs, individual donors, telling them about the importance of youth organizing, but it's really about the importance of all organizing. And if you can get out there and organize, then do it, you know, and don't do it just for yourself. Do it for the people that come after you, you know, yeah. do it for your family, do it for the cousin that you know that was denied access to an abortion or you know the the grandmother that you know that can't afford the cost of living right now Mm -hmm. because the legislature is doing nothing about it yeah do it for my grandfather who called me and asked me about Jaden, can you do something about the fucking property insurance crisis and i'm like pop i can't do a goddamn thing i'm not in the legislature but i can campaign to make sure that people you know the right people get in there yeah you know do it for people like that and that's where we can really make a lot of change um, and back the right candidates for the future. I think there's a lot of good people who are really set up to do a lot of good damage for this state mm. um, in the next few years um, and figuring out who those people are and supporting them and amplifying them. Whoever those people are in your mind, you know, support them. Make sure you're there for them. Let them know you're there for them. Amazing. Well, we have a primary coming up March 19th. I want to encourage everybody to go vote. Yeah. Yeah. Young people. Yeah. All you youths, I like saying the youths. The youths, why not? Yeah. Why not? Let me ask you a question real quick, real yeah. quick. What's youth? 25 and younger? <laughs> 30 and younger? So for voters, we say 18 to 29. Okay. So 18, 20, is that, yeah. that work? I thing? remember going to a Broward Young Dems meeting and they're like, you're over 40. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. I was like 41. I'm like, yeah. this is crazy. Why am I not a Broward Young Dems? Yeah, it's close enough. Why but not? But 18 yeah. to 29, that's yeah. a good. That's you got a, a good, wide range. Right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. That's the youth. Yeah, that's the youths right there. Okay. The youths, you know, we got to turn out the youths. Right. You know, I have so. pink hair because I want to look like the youths. You're there. Yeah. But I still have a mortgage and You're I, there. you know what I mean? Like, I don't well, want. You know, <laughs> I pay for rent, you know? Does that make me old, you know? I mean, it makes you responsible. Oh, that's great. I'm part <laughs> of Welcome it. Welcome to adulthood. <laughs> Love it. I hate it. I hate paying bills. <laughs> Screw it. Plus, it's too expensive, man. Oh, Fuck my it. God. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You live in a very expensive Can't place. Like yeah. Um, listen, I love when you come on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, I think you're a real special person. Oh, I, appreciate I think it. that's incredible what you've done. We need it. I'm proud of you. There's many people who get turned away and they yeah. say, fuck it, I'm out. And yeah. you didn't do that. And I know that what you're doing is going to have ripple effects that is going to change what's happening in the state. And we need more people like you and the people on your board, the people who are backing you and giving you donations. Yeah. I implore everybody to do that. If you're not listening in Florida and you want to see change in Florida and you're listen, give a dollar for every Florida man headline you've ever read. There How about go. that? Oh shit. That's that a, a lot good? of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah, you're just breaking people up right yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, I you got a mortgage <laughs> house at that point. <laughs> shit. I could think of like 30 Florida man headlines from the legislature. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, they're all in the legislature. I could think of like 50 from the Florida. Florida Dems in the past few years. 
<laughs> you can't do that to them. <laughs> Hillary, you're breaking the bank. Oh, my God. That's not okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I, I enjoy you. I'm so glad you were here and you you came and stopped by. Of course. And of course. let's pour some, for some out of our 40 for Tina, who's not here today. Oh, yeah, Tina. <laughs> Where's the gossip? Is there any gossip going on before, you know, what's Well, going I got on? gossip, but we got to stop. We got to hit, uh, not record. We're going to take, take it through offline, offline. Okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, she's got something good. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready for we it. We got juice. Love it. I'll give you all juice, right. but we don't... They don't need to know all that juice. Yeah, they ain't ready for yeah, it. Yeah, you're not ready for ready all of it. That. You're not ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right. Well, thank you, Janice. Thank you. All right. Bye. If you want to learn more about this week's guest, please go to our website, www.themuckpodcast.com. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Muck Podcast and on our Twitter at Muck Podcast. To support The Muck Podcast, please visit our Patreon page. We have three levels of support with exclusive content. Muckraker, Policy Wonk, or Bleeding Heart. We can't do this without you.